I just soaked my camera. <laughs> what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm in the garden. We're only a few weeks away from our estimated last frost, and as of right now, on the 10 day forecast, we do not have another freeze. It froze night before last. And though the forecast states that we don't have any freezes ahead of us, still it's still too early to like let our guard down. Now this is every year where we get to see as gardeners how risk averse we actually are. Um, when it is mid-March and therefore, I mean I'm three weeks or so before my, my estimated last frost when the 10 day forecast all looks really in the clear sometimes i just throw a little caution to the wind and i put some seeds in the ground now it's a gamble these are seeds i'm willing to lose i don't put any like rare seeds or seeds that i don't have excess i don't move my started plants out before the risk of frost has passed but because i'm not just a terribly risk adverse person i don't want a little gambling with seeds during this time so we've actually been getting some of the beds prepped and i'm thinking that i may put some like cucumber seeds and squash seeds now, i definitely don't want to take any risks with my started plants they're nowhere near ready to go out anyway all these started plants are like still very much fragile little tender babies just to clarify when the estimated last frost does come i will put my tomatoes out much before i put the peppers out i don't like to plant peppers out at, until at least a few weeks after the estimated last frost date i don't even want it to be getting close to freezing at night if i'm gonna have peppers out so if you have peppers planted and it drops below like 50 fahrenheit um like 10 celsius they can stunt so Usually, first week of April, we're hardening off tomatoes, watching the 10-day forecast, hardening everything off. Uh, and then I usually wait until May 1st, which is three or four weeks after the risk of frost has passed to start putting peppers out. Y'all, look at all the sweet little basil babies. There's a bunch back here too. Having a little happy birthday. Oh, look, that little tiny guy is so, so wee and fresh. Today started chilly, but it's warmed up. It's the evening now. I gotta turn the fans on in here because the greenhouse is actually really hot. I've been keeping the door shut because my garden kitty is having a good old time in here. But um, several of you suggested a screen door. I've actually been looking into a screen door that could go over French doors like this. I have like a hanging cover screen door thing out in the barn for the milk room, but it doesn't deter the cats. I'm probably gonna need something more structured. So right now I'm just putting, I'm just putting the fans on full. We've got the windows open and that is working pretty okay. It's still getting pretty warm in there, but not, I mean, the plants aren't showing any signs of struggle from it. As you can see, happy plants in there. So this was the first year that I can remember just really not having anything in my raised bed garden. Of course, I mean, I'm referring to at this house and in our old house. It's almost the three year anniversary of us coming to this property for the first time. Is that crazy? Like where we announced it to you guys? <clears throat> We've owned the land for a little over three years at this point. Even when I was in Arkansas in my raised bed garden, I would plant it over the winter. And this year we decided not to. So right now, it's, it's nice kind of coming back to this garden with fresh eyes for it because I took a break from doing much with it. I mean, obviously I've spent some time out here and piddled a little here and there. I had a few things I had tried to plant out here that the frost killed and I ended up just leaving it alone. But right now I've just been kind of tidying up. I've planted a few things. I've got some peas coming up here. So the germination here was fairly sporadic. The seeds were like five years old, but it, they might not have been that bad because there are still some that are just coming up. So maybe, maybe they're still on the way. Last night I was out here talking on the phone to my dad and planting bulbs until it was too dark to see. I put several daylilies in here. Uh, filling in some spaces which were previously filled with annuals and then once everything starts coming back up I'll probably plant some more annual flower seeds. I've still got quite a few bulbs to plant out here some different irises and daylilies namely 
So I haven't done a lot of weeding over the winter. Um, even though there have been weeds that have grown, they've just grown really slowly. And to me, there wasn't any point of trying to pull them out because more would just grow. But now that's something that we've been kind of picking at. I picked a bunch of weeds out of a little section last night before I planted it. And there are a few areas here that have weeds, but look at this creeping Jenny. It's like taking over this area, which I don't mind. I've got cannas coming back up. Like lots of little things are starting to peep up in this garden space. There's the garlic. So I know that we love the lush garden in the summer, but this may actually be one of the most wonderful times to be a gardener in my opinion when the garden is just like this on a warm late winter day when it's almost spring it's so close you can taste it you can actually get your hands dirty you're actually doing all this and you don't necessarily see the reward yet but you know it's coming man that just makes my heart overflow and like right now even though if you were not a gardener you would look at this garden and be like okay you, you wouldn't know how awesome this is about to be like this is about to be really nice this is a perennial garden that's going into its third season and you know i almost tore everything out and redid this and when I say almost, I considered it and then realistically looked at my time and it was like, oh, that's funny that you thought you were going to do that. So we're letting it rot this year. I am adding some things. I did pull a couple of things out, some like bigger bushes and plants that I wanted to move around. But even now with the weeds and the small growth and a lot of the things that are coming up are just barely peeping up, I can look at this and tell you how amazing it's going to be. Now we've got Creeping Jenny over there, but here, do you all know what has happened in my garden bed? A mint invasion. I am ever preaching the, the warning of containing your mint. And here I have ended up with mint in the ground and it is, at this point, it's here. So I'm just letting it go. It's going to be a, a ferocious ground cover. But I'm actually not upset, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't have necessarily chosen this. It just ended up this way. Um, you know, whenever you have things that are potentially aggressive in their growth growing in your garden, you know, there's always a chance that a sprig or a seed is going to get spread. And I did let the mint in the garden bed where I have it contained go to seed last year. So this is not terribly surprising. But man, it is everywhere. And... Um, you know, maybe it's okay. Maybe, maybe we'll see. It'll be like the epic garden showdown because I also have Bermuda grass that I deal with incessantly coming up in my in-ground gardens. And so we will see <laughs> who wins in that battle. Mint versus Bermuda grass. <laughs> it's going to be a gnarly fight. It's like all over here. I mean, you know, I would take the mint over the Bermuda grass. I mean, that's who I'm cheering for in this situation because at least it has some redeeming properties. I can make a lovely tea with this, whereas Bermuda grass is just rude. I planted some hollyhocks. I got as bare roots at the Costco in here yesterday. I'm taking all these bulbs down to the high tunnel where it is about time to start planting them. Um, planting these like frost tender things in the ground right now, even though we're not past our last frost date, I'm going ahead and doing that. Um, if there were like some really hard freezes on the forecast, I probably wouldn't, um, but I'm not terribly worried about that because with these bulbs, I mean, they'll be primarily in the ground. If anything pops up, I can easily just mulch it if it looks like it's going to freeze again and it'll be fine. And in the high tunnel, there really won't be an issue. Um, because obviously, if for some reason we do get like an April freeze, I can always just drop the walls down. Oh, it's so nice in here. So there are these big open spaces in the tunnel. I think there's some spaces here. There's this section over there. And this is just as we've harvested things out, we've just left some space open because we knew we were gonna sow cut flowers in here and all of those bulbs and tubers are gonna go to that. Ooh, I need to do something with this broccoli. I saw it yesterday and I thought maybe I would have a little more time, but it's starting to really loosen up a lot. So my ranunculus back here are starting to bloom, but they were also getting a little powdery mildew because I left the walls down too long, so we opened them. I don't think these are quite as vigorous as I would like, but I'm not terribly surprised by their state either. Today is one of those days this evening where 
as I shoot videos, I really just want to take you and show you all the beautiful places and I wish I could give you the experience of just sitting in the middle of them because it feels so springtime outside and the sun is shining. It's just gloriously alive and warm and all I can feel is thankful that winter is coming to a close and I don't even have anything that good to say. I'm just happy and I wish I could share that, that feeling with you. So I'm not trying to plant the flower bulbs right now. I've got dahlias. Um, that's the majority of what I have. I got some canna lilies, some gladiolus. So roughly my idea in this high tunnel is, is just to do cut flowers. I'm really not trying to become a cut flower farmer. It was just that this is our tunnel that had contaminated soil and it was just such a heartbreaking space. Like it was so disappointing. and. We did a lot of work to remediate that soil using worm compost and activated charcoal and uh, micromediation. And it is better now, like the soil's healthy, it grows well. We gave it a year to rest and then planted these veggies in it over the winter. And we've harvested a good deal of food out of here. But the initial idea was actually suggested by a viewer, why, we, why don't you put flowers in there? Cause that would be very redeeming. Cause I really, after going through like the disappointment of this garden, like everything I planted, like all of the, if you have, weren't here for that, um, the first year we had this tunnel, I bought all this compost that had what we assume was aminopyrrolid contamination. Everything I put in it, which I had started everything from seed, just curled up, got really gnarly, and um, it was really sad. So the suggestion was, why don't you plant flowers, kind of redemptively. Well, we have actually decided to start a farmer's market down around Beulah Roasting Company and the buildings that we have. So we bought buildings downtown. We are working on these renovations. It's a three phase project. So we're down with phase one, Beulah Roasting Co is open. We're shipping coffee and the roasting company is currently open on Thursdays. It's just a soft opening. We're just kind of testing some things out. So it's Thursdays from two to six that you can go actually get a cup of coffee or buy coffee beans in person. But we're actually starting a farmer's market and it's gonna be down there around the roastery um, in the street in front of the roastery in downtown Batesburg, South Carolina. And that's gonna be Thursdays. I'm gonna tell you the wrong time. It's like, I think it's 3.30 to 7.30. It's on our website, it's on BeulahRoastingCo.com. If you're interested in vending or being a volunteer, you can also check it out on the website. Um, we already have, I think 20, the last I heard we had 23 vendors signed up. So I think it's gonna be a really good market. We're really um, trying to focus majority on local growers and makers and artisans, people who are producing things locally. Now that my plan was the cut flowers, I was like, oh, I actually would have a place to sell cut flowers. Now, I've read books about cut flower farming. I've got some really good friends that do cut flower farming. I have said repeatedly, I am not trying to do cut flower farming. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I, I think it will be nice to put together some bouquets and be able to take them down there and sell them at our booth at the market. And I'll probably bring some odds and ends things from the farm to sell at the market, but I've, I'm not quite in the mind of being a market farmer. I mean, for the most part, we really do this for our own consumption, and, but I think it'll be good. <laughs> it'll be a nice way for me to be able to share things from my farm with the local community, um, and we'll just see how that goes. But I'm very excited for the market. I'm very excited to be able to shop from other people, for sure, and be able to meet people and stuff like that. So anyway, BeulahRoastingCo.com, there's a tab that says the former street market that has all the information that you would need if you're interested in that. And maybe you can come by and visit with us on a Thursday evening sometime during the season. Look at how glorious all the food is. Look at the spinach and the onions and all the lovely things in the background. So I am trying to decide what else I should plan in this cut flower space. I did get the dahlias, the gladiolas. I know I'll probably do like zinnias and some sunflowers. I got some seeds from Sunflower Steve and I'm thinking I'm gonna grow some of his sunflowers like closer together so they'll be more vase sized for the table. And then of course I've got holy basil growing, lots of basils. I like doing that in flower arrangements. 
Um, one thing that I was thinking would be really cool to be able to add to arrangements is our willow trees are getting pretty far along, pretty good size, and like willow branches can be really pretty to add. I'm not trying to do anything too terribly fussy. That's kind of, I, I am very much like, new to the concept of like really trying to grow a lot of flowers at once. I've always been very willy-nilly with it. Like I grow flowers to kind of supplement the vegetable garden and I've always like picked the occasional bouquet for my for my kitchen table or as gifts whenever I'm like going over to dinner at someone's house I'll take a, an arrangement but the idea of needing to pick you know se several bouquets and have them ready at a specific day of the week Kind of trying to take that into consideration. I don't know. What do you think? What should I put in this tunnel? With the rhizomes and the bulbs I currently have, I'm probably going to end up still needing to fill out half of the tunnel or so with started seeds. And of course, I've got tons of seeds for a lot of things. So amaranth was another thing that I thought would be really cool to have to be able to put some little sprays and arrangements. I love whenever people make bouquets that have unexpected stuff in it. You know, like not the typical that's why i like doing like basils and willow branches and i will put a lot of herbs sometimes i will prune tomato plants um, and take what i prune off like suckers and put them into flower arrangements uh, i especially like it when i can prune a branch of tomatoes that has little fruits on them and put that in a flower arrangement because i think that's really cool but obviously i can't do that <laughs> I can't do that on like a large scale for dozens of bouquets a week. Obviously, I wouldn't have any tomato plants left. <laughs> Maybe I need to plant a few tomato plants and just let them grow wild just for the purpose of being able to cut parts off and put them in flower arrangements. <laughs> So our house layout is here and our house is paused only very briefly um you know how these things go <laughs> one thing i have learned i was talking about having our downtown projects in phases one thing i have learned thoroughly in the last five years of my life since we've started like really like oh we're gonna knock projects out we do we have gotten so much done i'm not minimizing that but I have learned that anytime you are doing anything with construction, you just need to go ahead and let go of your idea of how it's gonna go. Oh, I don't think I have a lens that's gonna do this justice. But y'all see this great blue heron circling over the pond? I wonder what he's gonna do. So there's one heron that stays on the pond all the time. It's actually, there it is, taking off on that. Sure, but seasonally another heron comes and there are two. Oh, come show off for me, please. <laughs> anyway, about the house. We, um, sorry, for me it's not squirrel. I'm never like squirrel, unless it's a cool squirrel, in which case I would be. But it's always like, oh, look at the bird, look at the butterfly. Oh, look at what that chicken just did. Um, the bank said we didn't need a survey and then we did need a survey. So we were supposed to close um, and start construction the first week of March. And then like a couple days before we learned we needed to survey. So we had to call and get on that list, which is putting us off until April. Um, and for a moment, I kind of was like, Oh man, and then I stopped and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. It's gonna be the exact perfect timing. It's just a tinge, like disappointed, just cause I'm rearing to go and I'm so excited and like building this house is such a dream that, you know, there's a tinge of me that feels like, oh, but for the most part, it's gonna be fine. And honestly, I just said, can you believe we've been here for almost three years? it won't be that long and we'll be standing in that house and I'm gonna say can you believe this is done it's all perspective but you know the grass is getting really high in our house so we might have to take the outline down so we can mow <laughs> I don't know yet I really want to put the sheep in there they would love it bear you pest did you get outside who let you out did you find me Go over and say hi to the sheep. Oh, bear is so silly. 
he was in the backyard with Lulu whenever I uh, headed outside, but at, at five o'clock every evening, the kids have to bring the dogs in and feed them dinner if they haven't, if they're not already inside. And uh, he, if the front door is open, Bear knows how to open the screen door. So if he knew I was outdoors, he came looking. Hello, sheep. Hello, sheep. So you will notice here that all the ladies are in with Abel, the ram, enjoying a nice grass snack. And when I got my sheep, they had been exposed to the ram. And they could have given birth at the earliest in January, which obviously they didn't. And at this point, we decided to just put them all back in together on the off chance that they were somehow not bred and that way he could cover them. We have definitely seen him showing some interest. So I think at least potentially one of them was not bred um, because he was I'm very interested in one of them so I'm not worried about it um, I'm actually completely okay with the fact that they haven't given birth yet but I didn't want that to be prolonged I mean we had them in those other pens which we were moving them to fresh grass just to keep them on dry ground but I did not want to put those pens on this side of the pond this is the opposite side of the pond from the rest of our farm and of course there's still a good deal of traffic over here I mean our house is right up there Kind of see from here that's where we're building our house right there and of course the high tunnels and the greenhouse and everything but those pins my concern was is like what if some sort of predator was able to get over those pins they're not electrified and then the sheep absolutely can't get away whereas in the electric netting i'm less concerned about that because obviously that electric is a deterrent for them to try to push through but it is also a deterrent for any sort of predator to try to push through coyotes would really be the only real risk here and for the most part i mean we do have coyotes around here but so far in our experience because we have so much woods they really don't mess with the farm they seem very happy with the current situation and i'm happy that they're happy Though I will also be happy when they start having babies. Are you enjoying time with your ladies? You're a cutie. You're mean though, so I'm not getting in there with you. Did you enjoy a nice run? Has anyone else entered the pollening? When people ask me what's growing right now, what's growing on the farm? I'm gonna just be like oak pollen. It's everywhere. I'm not gonna complain because I love big old trees, but man, this is a rough few weeks if you have allergies. <laughs> it's like sometimes you come out and it looks just like a haze. The rain the last couple of days did help knock down a little bit of what we were dealing with. It looked like, um, you know, if you've ever been in a place where it's been, like where there's a wildfire burning nearby or something like that, where there's just that hanging haze in the air, it looked like that for a few days and then the rain came which helped a little. Anyway, I gotta go in and cook dinner. I just wanted to pop out. I was coming to take a look at a couple of things and decided to bring you guys with me. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I'm so excited to share this spring with you. I bless you. Until next time.